Here we're walking through uh, the syllabus for our Gen Chem 32A class for this fall 2021. Um, this is the full syllabus, um, and you can find this document um, in Blackboard with via the syllabus link. Um, also, that link you'll find that the document has also been uh, exploded into all the different sections. So um, you can see the full syllabus as well as individual sections if you're just looking for something like grades or lab or what have you. Um, uh, so just to walk through this uh, uh, real quickly, my name is Eric Ruggles. Uh, I'll be your uh, teacher for the semester and you can find me basically in Innovation 333 or uh, the Virtual Ethereal, right? Um, we'll be using that uh, throughout the semester. Uh, the best way to get a hold of me is through email um, or Teams, um, but but email uh, is something that I am checking um, quite often. Um, but if you feel you like the Teams platform, that is also um, a good way to get a hold of me. Uh, I have office hours pretty much every day, uh, Monday through Friday, from 10 a.m. to noon. Um, you know, sometimes I'm doing other things, so uh, you know, basically just giving me an email or a Teams chat as far as an appointment, letting me know that you're going to stop by is going to be really helpful um, so that I know I need to be in the office as opposed to walking down the hall or doing something. Um, so those are in-office hours appointments um, so we can talk face-to-face. -face, um, or if you know we want to talk screen-to-screen, -screen, um, basically hold virtual office hours basically any time. Uh, during the day or evening, as long as it fits um, our schedule. So two ways to get a hold of me: um, you one in office, and then and then one uh, virtual. Um, uh, either way, um, appointment would be nice. Um, it just helps keep my day organized, uh, and uh, you know we can go from there to, again to find something that works for both of us in our schedule. Uh, class time, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday from one basically to two o'clock and we are, um, in innovation E430. Um, I say teams, but that's only, uh, I, I will be recording classes, um, using teams, um, you know, as like a supplement, but we won't be streaming or anything like that. So, um, you really need to come to class. Um, textbook. Um, basically, I'm sure most of us taking most of us taking 31 EVM, so um, we really have everything that we need um, for this particular semester. Um, but if you um, are transferring in, or or you know, or maybe haven't taken the class in a while, there are a number of options uh, for you to to kind of look through. Um, basically, we need the textbook, um, and we need mastering chemistry. Um, if you want that textbook book to be, you know, uh, you know, you know, the hard copy, you know, that's up to you, whether you, you know, e-text, e again, up to you, um, but we need the textbook and we need mastering um, chemistry. Um, you know, the UVM bookstore is basically the most bang uh, for uh, the buck, uh, but, you know, the most uh, economical is really, um, is, is option four. Um, just depends on your personal preference of, of studying. Uh, so throughout, right, we'll have assignments and we'll have um, lecture. And so so realize that this class is a, is a flip class. So we're doing things a little bit differently, um, meaning that um, basically um, every week I'll be giving us an assignment and we can find those assignments within that assignments um, link. And each module that we find in there is going to contain lecture material, homework problem sets, and then um, helpful video examples of, of you know me doing problems to, to help with the process. Um, basically, these will be signed by week, so I've actually already assigned one um, yesterday for the week coming up. But I also will give reminders throughout the week as far as you know what we need to be to, to be working on. Um, so, you know, the, the video lectures are really going to describe, you know, the new material that we're going through. And that's really crucial for us all to really kind of work through the video lectures, you know, watch the video lectures, take notes with the, the video, treat it like a class. 
Um, you know, you can speed up the video if you want a little bit, you know, you can slow it down. Um, but, but make sure we get through those video lectures. And then we're going to find that there's homework problem sets tied to those video lectures. Now these, you know, we might not get them all completed, but what I want us to do is attempt them to make sure that we really give a good try at these questions. Um, the more we can do, the more we can get through, the, I think the better we're going to be. Um, but realize that, you know, class time is really going to be spent on, you know, kind of going through those homework problems and, and working to, together as a class um, to, to help us get through the, through the, you know, the hard material. And then, you know, as you're going with those homework problem sets, I always try to attach video examples of the homework to try to help, you know, if there is a disconnect while, while you're doing it. Um, so, so that's what has to really happen as far as, you know, kind of before the classroom setting in terms of homework is, you know, watching the video lecture, attempting the homework problem sets, doing your best there, um, and realizing that there's help resources to help us through those homework problem sets, not only in terms of a video sense, but also when we get to class, that is really where we're going to um, hopefully answer all these questions and make great connections. Um, class time. So class time, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right, 1 to 10. Um, and, and basically, I, I really want these to be kind of student-led with questions and answers as well as, um, uh, you know, just discussions. Um, questions really could be about anything um, when we get to class, as far as homework, lecture, exam related, whatever. Um, but but what I would like us to, to kind of work on as far as class time is, you know, when I'll come in, I'll probably do a 15 minute maybe um, lecture about the base concepts that were learned from the assignment that was given that for that particular day. Um, once we get through that 10, 15 minute lecture, then, and it could be a little bit longer, but, you know, roughly beginning of class, then we'll start to delve into question and answers. What types of questions do you have? Trying the homework. I know there'll be questions. And so then we can start to work on, um, you know, problems together as a class. Um, also, I'll come prepared with a number of questions. Uh, if, if, if things get stagnant, we'll work as a class together on, you know, 47 or 59 or 63. And, and, um, the hope is that we can create some really good group dynamics. We can start to create a community within our classroom, working on problems together. Um, and, and I'm hoping that that is, um, going to be really intriguing and interesting and a good learning environment for, for us all. Um, so, so class time is, is really meant to really delve into the material. We've already been working on the material. Now let's make sure we understand, you know, um, where, where, those, where those questions lie and, and the answers then to them. Office hours we already discussed, right? Basically, um, give me a shout on email or Teams and then we'll figure out um, what works best, uh, specifically in office or virtual. As far as, uh, you know, getting ready for exams, um, I do post old exams from 2019 and 2018 within course materials, um, but I really want to stress that you, you do not want to study just the exams. Um, some students fall into that pitfall, um, not what you want to do. Um, the, the, the big thing is the homework. The homework problems are really where it's at. I call it the meat and potatoes of the course or the broccoli and seitan of the course. Um, but uh, this, the homework problems is where it's at. That's where you're going to get all your skills, get your chops. And then when we get closer to an exam, then we could pull out these old exams as just like extra practice to help um, solidify things. Um, Throughout the semester, I'll offer recitations or review sessions. Um, these will be basically during our exam time, which is on your schedule blocked out from basically 640 to 940. But for the reviews, we'll just be looking at um, basically an hour. Um, 
this will be virtual. This will be totally on Teams. So, so for the review sessions, um, we won't be in class for those. Um, we'll just be meeting um, virtually. Um, also, the Sunday before a mid-semester mid exam, um, again, we'll hold another one, um, and that's going to be from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., also on Teams. So, um, you know, basically another venue to get questions answered. Not only do we have in-class, but then once a week I offer a review session for questions. And then when we start to get ready for that exam, um, you know, the Sunday before an exam, we'll, we'll also then try to focus a little bit more on th that exam material. Uh, again, this is really question and answer based. So um, please, uh, you know, come with questions. I don't have a prepared review or anything like that. Um, you know, it, it's really student driven. Throughout the homework, you know, sorry, throughout the semester, um, there's a lot of practice homework. And again, I want to stress that the practice homework is where it is at. Um, but to try to help out with like a homework grade portion of the class, I, we do have homework quizzes. Um, there'll be 10 graded homework quizzes um, out there, and that's basically 10 out of 10. So there is no, um, if you miss one, you miss one. Um, uh, these are, these uh, quizzes will be held solely on mastering chemistry. Um, and, you know, I'll give you all forewarning when they're, when they're coming up uh, and, and reminders of, of them. Um, but uh, please realize that the homework quizzes are, um, you know, not the same level that you're going to find on the exams, that their, their homework quizzes are a little bit easier. Um, and, and really, while yes, you can find some level of that on the exam, um, it's really the practice homework that's assigned from class to class and week to week that is the most important. That's what's going to give you the best prep. And if you're really working hard with those problems, you'll find that these homework quizzes are pretty easy. So, so I want to stress that. Really, it's the practice homework that's, that's really going to give you the most bang for your buck. Um, and then that'll allow these homework quizzes to be awesome as well. Exams, um, our exams are Wednesdays from 6.40 to 9.40. Um, they will be also in Innovation E432, um, which is a little uh, different than our room. Um, uh, no schedule make updates, but, you know, obviously if stuff comes up, you know, sickness, things out of our control, please, please talk to me. Um, each mid-semester exam is designed to take an hour and a half to complete, but we all have three hours to complete, which is known as, as double time. So double time is really provided to all. Um, so for any access accommodations um, in terms of time, uh, there will not be any access accommodations of time due to uh, how those exams are written. Um, however, uh, the final exam is a little bit different story. So for, for final, yes. I will um, allow access time accommodations. So, so for the mid-semester exams, that's just how we how we write these exams. Um, but for the final, since it is a cumulative, um, that's that's when we'll find that those uh, will be um, allowed. Um, the only thing that we need is really a non-programmable, non-graphing calculator. So. If you have a, a calculator and it's got a big screen to it, that's a graphing calculator, and you can't use it for the class. Um, you need something that's scientific but has a, a small screen. Um, the bookstore has uh, a sharp version as well as um, a TI version. Um, so that's the only calculator you can use. Um, and no electronic devices are permitted. Um, so if you get caught with these other sources, Right, we can get the zero for the exam, and obviously we don't want that. Here are our exam dates, basically once a month, um, and then the the final there um, at the bottom. Okay, part two gets into the lab piece. I mean, we've talked Chem thirty one, so most of this is exactly the same as what we've found in the past. 
um, lab manuals you'll find on Blackboard. Lab will have its own specific Blackboard site. Um, and so you need to print out experiments before you um, come to lab. You need to get a lab notebook or use the one that we already have. Same with safety eyewear. We need goggles or glasses, safety glasses. Um, if you wear contact lenses, um, I recommend you must wear goggles and also let your TA know. Um, contact lenses are, are, are a chemical, so um, they can fuse to your eye given the proper exposure. And so that's really a whole nother uh, ball of wax and then just getting some chemical in your eye and we can wash out. Um, so we need to uh, make sure if, if we have contact lenses, you know, I would recommend maybe wearing your glasses. Usually um, people that have lenses have, you know, glasses as a spare. Um, so that's what I would recommend you wear, um, and then wear either the goggles or the safety glasses, the big safety glasses, over your glasses. Um, everyone needs to wear safety, safety eyewear, um, otherwise you can be, uh, you know, told to leave the lab. Um, lab attire, also basically pants and shirts with at least short sleeves. Um, so if you have capris or shorts or... Uh, shirts that expose shoulders, midriff, or back, that is no bueno. Um, also, you cannot have open-toed shoes, so no sandals, chacos, tevas, um, none of those are allowed. You need to basically have your whole foot um, covered, uh, since, you know, obviously when we drop chemicals, they tend to go down onto our feet, so we need to have those uh, pieces of anatomy um, protected. Um, if you arrive at lab and you don't have these, the proper tire, you can, you know, basically get a zero for the day. So, um, usually the TAs are pretty nice. It might involve you running back to your dorm. Um, but, um, please just be prepared, have your extra pair of shoes in your backpack or, or what have you, um, so that you're, you're in a proper tire. Um, before we get the lab going and remember lab doesn't start for two weeks, you need to have the safety, uh, I'm uh, sorry, we have to have our glasses, our, our, our notebook, um, and we also need to complete the lab safety and academic integ integrity modules in lab Blackboard site. So we'll give reminders of that as we, as we get closer. Uh, attendance, super important. Um, if a student misses more than two labs, they get an automatic F for the course. That's for the course, that's not just for the lab. So attendance is crucial for the lab. Um, uh, if it's an unexcused absence, that will result in a, a zero for the experiment. However, if it's something out of our control and is excused, um, hopefully we have the ability to reschedule lab um, to one that works. Um, Christine Cardillo would be the person to talk to about rescheduling a lab because of sickness or because of a sporting event. You can email myself, but I will just be then forwarding it on to her. So um, you can email both of us or, or her as far as the laboratory is concerned. Um, we do not do uh, uh, labs past the week the lab is given. So in order to make up a lab, you need to make up the lab the same week that you actually missed your lab um, time. So uh, please keep that in mind. Uh, the number of lab videos with this uh, link. Um, these are helpful in, in helping you to figure out already prior to lab how to set up the apparati, um, some comments and stuff like that, Ca um, you know, safety precautions, get kind of prep for the quiz um, the quizzes that come your way uh, in the lab. And then um, we have a general lab format. So here is just kind of a paragraph going through kind of the day-to-day -day in lab. Um, this is just kind of giving you something, you know, to kind of give you an idea of what is coming your way. Um, you'll get a lot more of this information into much more detail, you know, come um, when, you know, the lab Blackboard sites open up and you can peruse their syllabus um, as well as that first day of class, um, you know, talking about all the uh, ins and outs of the lab side of the course. 
course grade. Um, basically, we have 75% is lecture and 25% is lab. Um, so we have 750 points in terms of the class um, that's split up into three exams. Um, each one is is 370, well, each one is 125 points. Homework, which comes out to 100 points, and then the final exam, which is 275, which it's worth more due to the, the cumulative nature of, of the exam. So, so that's how the uh, class broke it down. Notice that most of the points are coming from exams. So while the homework is there, it's a small portion um, exams take up most of the points in this class and, and how again do I get those points it's that weekly practice homework daily practice homework that's being assigned the more you do the more you work at it the more questions you ask the better you will get and you'll find that then you're gleaning as you know a lot of points in the homework but as well in the exams um, it's a policy that we have, or I have, that um, that the final has the ability to count twice. So a lot of times uh, th throughout the semester, you know, there's usually one low ball uh, exam. Um, you know, maybe we get sick, maybe we have three exams, maybe we have two exams in a paper, you know, which is a, it's a harsh week. Um, and so I don't like that to be... Um, a game changer for us so I allow the final to actually replace your lowest mid-semester exam now provided that the final has a higher score I don't want this to be damaging so if we look at example one we find the student had actual scores did really well in the beginning um, but dropped down to a 45 percent for exam two bounced back with exam three and then got a 75 percent on um, the final. And so as a result of that, if we go down to then the counted scores, notice that the 75% now um, actually counts twice. The final exam replaced the student's lowest mid-semester score. If we go to example two, we find that the actual scores were pretty all the same, roughly 70s, upper 70s, and the final is actually the lowest of, of the bunch. As a result of the final being the lowest of the bunch, it doesn't replace anything, and those are simply the scores for the actual student. The lab is then... Um, 250 points or 25 percent of your grade um, and so there'll be pre-lab questions technique post-lab questions uh, basically safety quiz they're involved as well um, to, to um, bring you up to 250 points lab again is a good place to get some points um, to help you out at the very end of the day so don't let your lab grade um, suffer and then your grade determination is really just an addition of all the points and then divide it by a thousand. I don't post what the grade borders are. Um, I wait till the end of the class just to then determine them. Academic uh, integrity, please don't cheat, basically. Um, all right. Uh, part four here is just basically our, our lecture schedule. So, um, you know, week to week and class to class, I'll be trying to keep us up on pace as far as lecture videos, homework assignments, things of that nature. Um, but all of it is posted here. So for the entire semester. So here, you know, so if a student wants to work ahead, they, they, they can see what's coming um, their way. This is done week to week, um, includes holidays as well. And it's tentative. You know, sometimes we get a little bit behind, you know, uh, type of thing. But um, this is pretty much what we'll try to be sticking to. So it goes through week to week, gives you homework assignments and, and the modules that are associated with them in terms of our uh, Blackboard module assignments, you know, and then holidays like Labor Day um, or other things such as UVM's last day to add drop, fall recess, uh, last day to withdraw, Thanksgiving holiday, etc., etc. And then our final at the end. 
And so every exam you'll notice has like a double asterisk beside it. Um, and that's just saying that really the exam material really depends on how far we got at that point. It'll be pretty close to what we see here. Um, but, you know, sometimes there are subtle differences. We then have part five or our lab schedule. Notice again that labs do not start for two weeks. So we don't start till the 13th. And then we have to make sure that we you know, got out of all of all of our stuff. I'm sorry, there is no breakage card. Uh, so that is nothing to worry about. I'll have to get rid of that. Um, but we need to you know have our lab manual. Like you know, we've printed out the experiments. We need our safety glasses as well as that safety presentation quiz um, and academic uh, in integrity uh, quiz that need to be get, need to be done. And so here it's just a real general, like each week, what experiment you're running, and then how does that relate to the lecture or the module that we see? Um, so that's the basis for the lab. Your, your lab syllabus will have much more information than what we see here. Hey, kind of getting the last pieces of these, of this, uh, uh, Access accommodations, um, if you have access accommodations, we just have to talk about them. Um, I've already kind of commented on the exam time accommodation, um, but uh, regardless, you know, we should sit down and have, you know, a quick face-to-face -face or screen-to-screen -screen, uh, meeting with, you know, uh, you know, what your access accommodations are and how best um, we can or I can uh, serve you with that. Um, that could also be an email conversation, depending on the extent of it. But um, I get so many emails with access and 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 PDFs and things of that nature. Um, I think it's always best to just talk to the student and and see what's going on. So please contact me as far as access accommodations are concerned. Religious holidays. Um, if you're practicing your religion and and obviously celebrating those holidays within. I mean, you need to let me know if there is a conflict. Um, I don't know all the religions. Um, well, I, I know a few, I suppose, but I don't know all of them. Um, and I definitely don't know their dates of, 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 of celebration. So um, please, I'm sure um, if you are uh, celebrating these dates, that you are aware of them and you would just have to let me know um, if there is a conflict and then we will go forward and, and resolve the conflict. Illness accommodations and COVID accommodations, kind of the same thing, but one's a little bit more serious. So for illness accommodations, if you're just sick, you know, a lot of students go to the Center for Health and Well-Being, and that's fine. However, this does not provide notes verifying medical illness. You, you, what you really need to do for an accommodation is to contact your dean's office. Uh, and then they can contact your illness to all your professors and then talk about accommodations going forward. Now, illness these days, right, always comes with the question of COVID. So, um, you know, what I would stress is that, you know, if you're feeling any symptoms, you should get checked out, you know, you know, before coming to class or get tested. Um, that's just keeping everyone safe. Um, we still have the green and gold promise going on. Everyone needs to wear, uh, you know, masks as as well. Um, so we we need to uh, comply with 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 that. Um, if you're caught in mask without the class in the class, I'll ask you to put one on, or I'll ask you to leave. You know, basically. Um, so, and if you're feeling sick, you know, um, okay, stay, stay at home, get that test scheduled and, and go get the test to make sure that you're not um, COVID positive. Um, keeping, you know, everyone, you know, around us, you know, your peers, your, your teachers um, safe. Um, so, um, you know, I would, you know, be more cautious. Um, so, so um, and then just keep, keep me in the loop. Let me know what's going on. You know, I have no problem with, you um, moving things around, things of that nature, um, to keep everyone uh, safe within the class. 
Lastly, some just other kind of links to, to maybe help us, uh, you know, health and safety. Um, again, there's the Center for Health and Wellbeing, as well as counseling services um, or, or, or care if you're concerned about another UVM peer or member. Um, and then just to help with, you know, creating, you know, a connections with diversity and, and inclusion, um, there are a number of, of sources on campus um, to, to reach out. Um, there's, you know, the diversity web link that gives you a lot of these connections as well. But, you know, there's the Interface Center as far as your philosophy, spiritual practice, re religious practice, uh, the Mosaic Center for Students of Color, um, the PRISM Center, um, Women and Gender Equity Center, a lot of great places here um, to reach out and, and really include yourself in the diversity that makes UVM a great place um, to actually be at. Lastly, uh, don't see too much of this, uh, but great appeals. Um, here would be procedures for that. Um, and then FERPA, you know, um, I'll talk to you about the grade. I will not talk to your parents or anything like that. That's pretty much how that works. Um, so that is the syllabus for um, our fall 2021 Chem 32 class. Um, we will answer questions that we have um, either during that first uh, first day of class or within the discussion boards. Um, I look forward to meeting uh, you all uh, this coming week.